to my channel hope you're all doing okay so in today's video i'm going to be talking about my labor and delivery story i gave birth to my little girl uh eight days ago now oh that was a funny face yeah are you doing a poo yeah i think so is there some wind in there i can't believe how fast the time's gone and how she's eight days old already i will never know but yeah, so this is Novely Rose. We also call her Nova for short. Thought I would just share with you my labour and delivery story. The plan was to film parts of my labour and delivery, and I started off filming parts of my labour and delivery, but it all kind of went from naught to 100 very quickly, and I ended up not getting much footage at all. It just wasn't on my priority list at the time. Yeah, I got some footage, but not a lot. So it's more gonna be me just chatting through what happened for what I can remember anyway. Um, I did write down a few notes along the way when I was actually able to write down some notes, but it got to a point where I could no longer record anything and I lost all concept of time and what was going on. So I'll start from the beginning. I think I was probably in early sort of slow labour for probably at least a week on the lead up to Nova's birth. Um, I was getting a lot of period pains, cramps, lots of backache, lots of period pain, backache and things like that. Um, and I do think that this was kind of all linked to my labour and delivery, definitely. So on Wednesday the 4th of August, we went for a long walk along the cliff tops at Sheringham. Sorry if the lighting changes in here, I'm using natural light and the sun keeps coming in and out, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, we went for a walk that evening along the cliff tops of Sheringham and I had, Tom took a photo of me and when I looked back at it, my bump looked really low, it looked like she'd really dropped. But I felt like she had dropped for quite a while, so I didn't really think anything of it. I did feel a bit funny that day, I felt quite tired, I felt very irritable and emotional, and I also was getting really bad cramps in my back, a backache, a bit of a dull period pain, tummy ache in my tummy, and, but I didn't think anything of it because I've been having this for uh, probably two weeks before that, on and off, so yeah, I mean, me and Tom did say, Maybe tonight's gonna to be the night joking, like, yeah, like, it obviously won't be. But that long walk in the fish and chips obviously did something because that's when it all kind of kicked off. So I also had a few tightenings on that walk, um, but I would have said they were more Braxton Hicks than contractions. And again, I've been getting kind of lots of Braxton Hicks on the lead up to this point anyway. <laughs> I think we've got a windy baby here. Went to bed as normal, Tom was outside playing PlayStation. I woke up at 12am on the 5th, so I woke up at midnight. And at that point I did have quite, not severe, but the period cramps had in, intensified. And I went to the toilet and I had a slight brown discharge. I, at this point I thought this isn't my mucus plug, it's not enough to be a show. But I thought, hmm, this is a little bit different to what I've been experiencing before. And I went back to bed and I just couldn't get back to sleep. I had really bad lower back pain and it was, that was the thing that was stopping me from sleeping. I think it was around about 1.30, 2 in the morning when I thought, okay, these could probably be contractions. Um, I had to keep going to the toilet which again is another sign that things might be progressing and things might be happening, but it doesn't, I didn't think, oh, this is going to be it or this is going to be quick. I just thought maybe it was, again, my body getting ready for labour, but not actually going into labour, but I was wrong. And at that point, I then decided to have a shower because my back was really, really sore. I didn't feel much through my tummy. It was all through my back, having these like cramp tightening type things. It's really hard to explain, but I basically had all of my contractions and pain through my back. It was basically back labour rather than your typical through your tummy. At 2.30 in the morning, I then started timing my contractions. So I thought, actually, yeah, these are, these must be contractions. The way that they were coming and going, 
again, all in my back, but the way that that was happening and kind of the intent, how they were intensifying, um, indicated to me that this could, this is probably labour. Then at course three, three o'clock, I, I lost my mucus plug. At this point, I was actually downstairs and I was sitting on my birthing ball. I'd pop some stuff, something on telly to watch and I lit a load of candles and um, put my diffuser on and I was just really trying to relax and uh, calm through these sort of feelings. I woke Tom up to tell him that I'd lost my mucus plug and that I was thinking that this was the start of something and that I was timing some contractions, but they were very sporadic and they weren't um, that intense. So he went back to sleep. So <laughs> hopefully this is the start of my labour and delivery vlog. Um, something is definitely happening. <laughs> Um, I'm now starting to time whatever it is here that's going on. Um, I'm pretty sure they are contractions. They're mostly through my back, but something's definitely happen happening um, because I literally have just had my show as well, my mucus plug. So yeah, I've definitely, something's definitely happened. I think I've got one coming now. So just using the Freya birthing app on my phone to time the surges and things like that. Um, I did wake Tom up just to let him know what was going on, but he's gone back to sleep, which is good because he is going to need to make sure he's getting some sleep. I'm, I'm just downstairs now. I'm going to watch some TV to try and distract myself. Um, and I have actually taken some paracetamol because it's just that back pain. Um, but yeah, I've just got to wait and see now. See how it goes. <laughs> um, hopefully I'll be able to manage for a while at home, but we'll see. And hopefully it won't be stop start. Hopefully this is it now, but it can very easily just disappear, I know. So just taking it as it comes, basically. I was using the Freya Birthing app to kind of time my to time my contractions and to help me with my breathing. I was using up breathing um to help and that really did help and the comfiest i could get was on my birthing ball I woke Tom up because I needed a little bit of help with pain relief. Um, I wanted to use my TENS machine, so I asked him to help me, he got up and helped me. Put that on and I sat with my TENS machine on for a little while, which did help ease the pain a bit. Just press it, press it once, shall I? Just, what are you pressing the on button? Well, the first button. Yeah, so turn it on, right? Yeah, it's, it's already on. And then you I got the, Oh, you can? It's literally like a tiny little buzz. It's like a ting tingling. I don't know how high, how many settings are there? It goes up to 30. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Three to four. Did you press it quickly? Oh. No. We'll see how this pans out. <laughs> um, and Tom also made me some toast around this time because I was then starting to get really hungry. So my contractions are kind of all over the place. They did get into a little bit of a pattern. 
kind of like coming between like every seven and ten minutes but um and they were lasting between like 50 and 60 seconds but they've now gone a bit sporadic again but i've got my tens machine on and i did wake tom up and <laughs> he's just now made me some toast because i'm really hungry so hopefully things are progressing um it's just all the pain is in my back which is weird i thought i would have more through my tummy so yeah i don't know whether to phone the midwife yeah or not i then phoned the midwife at 6 a.m because my contractions were starting to get a little bit closer together not enough to go into into hospital or into the midwife led birthing unit but i noticed that they were kind of getting closer so i spoke to the midwife and i just wanted to clarify that these were definitely contractions because I still hadn't put anything through my tummy. It was all through my back. But when speaking to the midwife, she said, yeah, that's fine, that's normal. Um, try not to time them, just relax, have a bath, chill out, um, basically just continue what I was doing. So I did then um, run a bath. I also at that point had to go to the toilet again, so this was a frequent thing that was happening throughout. I also found sitting on the toilet a really comfortable position, um, so I was found myself there quite a lot. I then had a bath, my contractions did continue and Tom went back to bed and had a bit of a rest because we didn't really know what was going on, we didn't know whether it was going to progress and we were even thinking that Tom was probably still going to go to work. I got out of the bath at around seven, I then had to go to the toilet again. And at this point was when I really did lose the rest of my mucus bug. I thought I'd lost it earlier on, but I hadn't. <laughs> Not all of it anyway, the rest of it then came out this time and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is happening. So then I sort of told Tom, um, and I just continued to rest and uh, do all the things that make me happy. Like I said, with the, like lighting candles, relaxing, listening to like positive affirmations and breathing and things like that all from the birth positive birth company um i also took some paracetamol and i did take some paracetamol earlier on early hours of the morning as well actually um which i think i included in a bit of a clip of, of me filming and i then popped my tens machine back on um well, once i was out of the bath obviously it's about 20 to 9 um, I ended up having a bath. We did speak to the midwife um, just because I was concerned about the fact that the contractions were all in my back. Um, but she was just assured me that that's fine and it's probably just early, latent labour. So um, I had a bath and I've had some more paracetamol. I'm now just trying to have a little bit of a rest. I did definitely have the rest of my mucus plug. Um, I lost the rest of that because I thought I had earlier on, which I obviously had a bit, but definitely the rest of it has now come out. So that's a good sign. My contractions were really, really intense and quite close together, and now they've just kind of trailed off again. So I don't really know what's going on. I tried to get some sleep. I couldn't sleep through them, and now I'm awake. They've kind of eased off a bit. I have got my TENS machine. I touched that back on because it was getting really painful. And then as soon as I do that, it all kind of just stops. So <sighs> I don't really know what's going on. Um, but hopefully I'll keep progressing and hopefully baby will keep keep doing what she needs to do. So yeah, I'm just going to try and get some rest now. And this is where my contractions did then start to intensify. You okay? <laughs> I remember I was trying to lay down on the sofa and I had this really, really strong, again, back contraction come on and I, I couldn't sit, I couldn't lay in that position. So I, I got up and I went to sit on my birthing ball because that was the only comfy position, either sitting on it or leaning over it, kind of like leaning over the birthing ball or on sort of all fours. I could not sit down because my back was in agony. Um, 
And luckily I did because I sat down on my birthing ball and that was when my waters broke. So I just was like, oh, and it just came out. Um, it wasn't loads, but it was definitely not just a little trickle. It was kind of in between. Um, and I knew it was definitely my waters. So this was at about nine o'clock. From then, that is when um, my notes basically stop and that is when it just went from naught to 100. I phoned the midwives and to let them know that my waters are broken and they said, oh yeah, it's fine, you're still in early labour, you know, it can still take a while. Um, just keep time in your contractions. They still don't seem quite right yet. They're not quite um, close enough together and lasting long enough. But for me, they were. They were they were definitely intensifying and they were getting closer together. It was just that on occasion I would then have like a gap, a longer gap. But I found the longer I had in between contractions, the stronger the contractions then were and the longer they then lasted. So after that, <laughs> my contractions were basically then very nearly back to back. They just kept coming. They got a lot stronger. I was like, upping my TENS machine. I was then in a lot, a lot of pain. And I phoned my mum and my mum was like, you should probably get yourself up the hospital. Like from her experience, once her waters broke, she was literally, you know, it was very fast from then. And that was very similar to me. So I don't think it was very much longer later, probably about 20 minutes. I then had to phone the hospital back. And I said, look, I need to come in. Um, I was trying to get myself sorted upstairs, trying to get myself dressed. Because this has all like then happened really, really quickly. Tom wasn't sorted, he hadn't had a shower. I'd packed my hospital bag, but there was still a few bits that I needed to gather and sort out and collect. I hadn't got dressed and we needed to put all this stuff in the car. Um, but I was then in so much pain, I could not even walk down the stairs. Um, and this is when it all kind of becomes very blurry and I don't know what was going on. My mum then turned up to get the dog. Um, we were trying, Tom was running around sorting stuff out. I was just trying to breathe through my contractions, using my TENS machine, trying to get myself a little bit sorted, ready to go. Tom shoved everything in the car. Um, and then I was trying to come down the stairs and I was just, in, I was in so much pain. And I was trying to get in the car. We ended up having to phone the midwife again to say, look, she's really struggling, like, I'm really struggling to I'm really struggling to get in the car so I ended up having to kind of like lay on my side they even talked about sending out a paramedic it was just all very intense Tom rushed us to the hospital I was laying like on my side with a cushion behind my back and that was the probably the worst part of the whole thing was that car journey I was in so much pain and I then started to feel sick um, I wasn't sick but I felt it we whizzed to the hospital or to the midwife-led birthing unit and um, I arrived and they had to come and get me in a wheelchair. I couldn't even walk. I mean, at this point, I just thought that surely this has got to be happening soon. Um, and I was, all I wanted was some more pain relief. I was kind of worried that I was going to turn up there and be like, yeah, you're like two centimetres, you're being really overdramatic. But we got there. They wheeled me in, we got to our room, to the midwife led birthing unit, which was lovely, and I started having some gas and air, and that was amazing. That took so much of the pain, not necessarily completely away, but, but it definitely eased, <laughs> eased the contractions, and it just kind of made me, well, just away with the fairies, so that was the best thing, having that gas and air. Um, we were then kind of, getting sorted or whatever, and they said, oh, do you want to get in the birthing pool? Which I did, so they were kind of running that, whatever. And then the midwife said, I remember her saying to me, you sound like you want to, want to push. Do you feel like you have that push sensation? I said, yeah, I think I do have, I, I do feel a bit like that. Um, so she was like, okay, because at this point they hadn't examined me. I think they thought I was being dramatic. So once I then got examined, which was horrendous because I had to lay on my back and that was where all of my contractions were and it was, the, it was just so painful. I was just sucking on the gas and air. I had my TENS machine still going and she examined me and she was like, oh, wow, you're eight centimetres. And I was like, 
Okay, so it's kind of a bit of a relief because I thought, thank goodness, because this means I'm I'm not being over dramatic. Like this is painful. I've got to eight centimeters at home with, with all I had was a tens machine and paracetamol, and then obviously I just started on the gas and air once I got there. So I arrived there and I was already at eight centimeters, which was just insane. So she's like, right, let's quickly get you in the water. So I then got in the water and that, again, was such another amazing pain management. It just completely took the weight off my body so I could get into a comfortable position because that was what I was really, really struggling with. So I managed to kind of like be on, my, be on all fours and take the weight away, which was just amazing. So I spent some time in the water with the gas and air, contractions continuing, I was using my up breathing. Uh, there was then a point where I wanted to be examined again because I was really feeling like I was getting towards the time of wanting to push. So I had to, and at this point they were like, well, let's just change the water, um, we'll refill it. Why don't you go and have a sit down on the toilet for a little while? Because I then had the urge again. I was having those urges to go to the toilet, which did happen throughout. Um, so I went and sat on the toilet. I, just, I know this is TMI, but it's, it's birth. Um, and I examined me and I think around that point I was there and she said, yeah, you're, you're pretty much 10 centimetres. There's just a tiny bit of cervix that's in the way, but she could kind of move it with her hand. And she said when you, I then did a big push and she said she could see the head starting to come down. So I was like, okay. So uh, that's when we then refilled the pool um, and I then got back into the birthing pool and that was where I then did my pushing. I had got to that stage of 10 centimeters. I got to that transitions, that's transition phase of I can't do this. Um, and at this point I was like, I just need something else. I want some more pain relief. Um, actually I started asking for more pain relief once I got out of the pool. Um, I wanted something more. And she said, well, by the time you have it, it's not gonna be worth it your baby will be here um, and if I give you pethidin now you won't be able to get back in the pool because we'll have to make sure that you haven't reacted to it and it can make you sleepy and by the time you would be allowed in the pool your baby will be here so um, and Tom was amazing he just kept saying to me you can do this you know she'll be here soon just stay in the water you don't need that you don't need pethidin there's no point just keep going so didn't have any I pushed through and I got back in the water and I birthed little Novely at eight minutes past one in the afternoon and she weighed seven pound eight um I can get emotional when I think about it it was just amazing I, I birthed in the pool I was sort of leaning over on all fours Tom was that end and he watched it all he could see her head he said her head came out and then her arm came straight out because she loves having her arms up by her face. Um, and yeah, there was a point where I remember shouting or <laughs> kind of in my breath, ring of fire because I felt that happening. It was such a, a weird experience because even though I had really no idea what was going on because I was sucking on the gas and air so much, I knew what my body was doing and I was the one that was saying to the midwife right here, you know, she's coming down, here's the head, like, I could just feel, I could just feel in my body what was happening, I was just so in tune with what was going on and I was then, when I was needing to push, I kept saying to the midwife, am I allowed to push, can I push, can I push, and she kept saying yes, 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 but I just don't think I was listening, but because that was what my body was telling me to do, I just wanted to make sure that that was right. Um, and I used the down breathing through Positive Birth Company that I'd learned through them. And I tried to kind of put all my energy and focus into pushing at this point. And Tom said it kind of, a switch kind of flicked. And I was just in this zone and the noise kind of stopped and I was just really concentrating. And I was using that to breathe out. I was listening to the midwife, obviously when you get to the point of the head, they tell you to kind of like slow down the breathing and all that sort of stuff. So that was amazing and I just listened to my body and just went with it from there and here she was, out she popped. So I picked, they sort of gave it to me straight away, 
into my sort of through my legs into my arms I held her there we had skin to skin for a while in the water uh, they offered Tom they offered Tom to cut the cord he didn't want to so I did we then moved out of the pool onto the bed because I wanted to see if she wanted to feed um, and we just had skin to skin for ages they asked me if I wanted the injection to birth my placenta I said well no not at the minute I'll just see how it goes and if I need it in a little while I'll have it then um, so I didn't have the injection but my placenta took an hour and it still hadn't come out so I then did have the injection at this point I'd had some skin to skin time so with Tom and we'd sort of offered her the boob but she didn't take it um, we sort of went back to our room just having cuddles and just in this amazing little bubble because I think I forgot to mention my our room didn't have a birthing pool in it so I just had to walk across the corridor to where I could use the birthing pool so that's what I mean when we went back to our room we were just relaxing and just taking it all in it was just amazing so I then had uh, had the injection to deliver the placenta which was then fine the midwife kind of helped that process because once apparently once you have the injection they can help that so that was good a little while later I then had to be checked over and examined and it turns out I did tear I had a second degree tear but I think because the labour kind of went so quickly um, it's not really very surprising that I had a tear so um yeah I then had to have stitches which was not the nicest most pleasant experience but it was fine the worst bit was the general anaesthetic down there they give you like four well I don't know it depends I guess what your tear is like but I had to have four injections down there to numb the area before I had the stitches so again I was on the gas and air for that and Tom was having cuddle time we then just stayed in the midwife head birthing unit for a while we were there for quite a few hours they would have let us go earlier but because I had a few problems with trying to get her to latch um, and because I wanted to breastfeed if I could um, they were kind of there wanting to support us with that so we stayed for quite a few hours afterwards and we then ended up being or coming home about 2am between like 1 and 2am the next day it was an amazing experience it, it was basically everything that I wanted in my birth plan um, even though I was very up to a change with that and just to see how it goes but by the time I got there I didn't really have much choice I was only able to have gas in there and the water but it just all was amazing I'm so grateful for my labour and delivery and how it went and recovery is going well so I have um, been filming a few clips of like our first week home with a newborn as first time parents and all this stuff that's going on so I will try and keep you updated with everything of that that's going on as well. It's been such a good girl. You slept the whole way through this, mummy chatting away. Aren't you? Yes. But yeah, little Novi Rose born on the 5th of August at 8 minutes past one. And it's honestly been the best week of my life. Challenging, but the absolute best, rewarding, amazing week ever. And I wouldn't change it. And I can't even explain how much love. I have for her, me and Tom, just saying how we love her so much and we just can't get enough and oh yeah. But anyway, I'm going to now, I think, just chill on the sofa and have a little bit of a sleep if I can because newborn nights are hard. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and it hasn't put anyone off um, and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Thank you.